So we're gonna try something new in this one. I'm calling this crawfish and tech because around here, one of our favorite things to do in the spring is eat boiled crawfish. So think of this like a podcast where I sit down with some other professional who's out there in the real world doing the real world stuff and the real world work so that we can get advice on how we can get started in that profession and what's really going on in their current events. So let's get going. Today I sat down with Laird Wilson, the IS manager for the LSU Foundation. I work with Laird and he's an incredibly brilliant person and I wanted to actually pick his brain on how you can get started in this IT world, software development. What does it even mean to be a software developer after all? So we'll hear his thoughts on how he got started, how you can get started, what it means to be a software developer and what kind of work we really do. And even cooler, we do it while eating crawfish. So check it out. All right, what's up everybody? I'm here with Laird Wilson, software developer, and we are eating crawfish. Now this is our first time doing this format, so bear with me, but we're just gonna eat. We're gonna talk about tech. So, uh, Laird, this is one of our favorite things. We just sit, we eat, we talk about tech. So, tell me about what it means to you when you say you're a software developer. What does that mean? Um, I think what that means to me is just kind of like, finding ways to use technology to make what you're thinking about a reality within computing. Okay. I think that's what that means to me. So, let's, I kind of want to dig into that a little bit more, because like, when I was in networking and systems, and I thought about the title software developer, I guess where my head went was like web developer and app developer. I was thinking about like a front end GUI. Yeah. So what do you think, Demystify that. Oh, okay. okay, so there are several different facets of software development. And what you're talking about with web development or like a front end GUI, that's just one kind of development. Um, something that I really specialize is something more along the lines of ETL, which stands for extract, transform, and load. Okay. That's the kind of development that's really behind the scenes. It's those quiet wizardry things that no one sees, no one interacts with, but they make the magic happen you know, uh, behind the scenes for like real systems. Okay. So in a way, it's kind of like scripting in a way. Yeah. Oh no, we're good. Well, <laughs> maybe so, yeah. Yeah, we might help. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we get messier. Okay. I thought, well, y'all guys, like, you just kind of No, you know. We'll get them. So <laughs> in a way, it's kind of like <laughs> scripting where, you know, I, I like, I'm thinking about like Python in the simplest example. You can use Python to build like a front end with a GUI and stuff. Oh, absolutely. But it feels like that's not that's not a typical use. And so if I'm writing code that automates a process or something, that's kind of software developer y. Yeah. So what's your background? How did you get into it? How did I get into ETL development or, or just software, software in general? In general. <clears throat> code. So, um, one of my first jobs in IT, I was working as a, a systems engineer, believe it or not. And uh, I loved my job, but I kept finding new ways to automate some of the more boring things like we can do with Python. But this was a long time ago. This is, this is before I really knew about Python in general. And so I was using VBScript at the time to do a lot of really great things to script out uh, GPO deployment, for example, you know, or to log in scripts or that kind of thing, you know, as a, as a systems engineer. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the, the, uh, the, the creative process, I guess, mm -hmm. behind um, turning an idea that you have and, and using, you know, a computing language, or in this case, just a scripting language, you know, to make a creative idea that you have a reality and then really see that happen. And I love that. Yeah. And the more I went down that path, the more I decided that was what is for me. And so I made a career of it. That's, and it's, that, I haven't turned back since and it's been wonderful. So talk to me about that then. I, I, a lot of people that I think are going to watch are going to be thinking about making. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Mike? <laughs> A lot of people are going to be thinking about making a career out of it. Yeah. And 
that's really the question is how do you make a career out of it? What, how do you make a career out of a software developer? What's your next step? Oh my goodness gracious. All right, so for me, once I realized that software development was something I was really into, I started looking into jobs. So what does it take to get into the software development world? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found was that people really want to see, you know, college degrees, for example, in software development. So I was like, all right, well, what's it going to take to do that? So I started going back to school. I went to LSU, you know, mm -hmm. to get my degree in that. And then beyond that, you know, I needed something to really solidify the fact that I knew how to do this stuff. So I started, you know, Google searching. It's like, how do I do this? It's this thing called software development. What is that? You know, and what are the different languages, you know, that I can use to develop software? Well, the first one that I learned at LSU was VB. Um, then I took it upon myself to also learn C Sharp. And so uh, now I'm getting down in the road of you know, Python. You know, so really it's just been kind of... Um, taking the initiative to be curious of what it is to, to do software development. Okay. You know? um, so which language do you think you're strongest with? Oh, by far C Sharp. C Sharp. Uh, without a doubt, C Sharp. So a lot of people who know C Sharp refer to themselves as .NET developers. That's Ooh. correct. Why? Well, so I believe C Sharp was originally, <clears throat> was originally uh, built by Microsoft with the idea of it being used by .NET. So .NET being the framework that Microsoft created as a, uh, a, a series of tools installed on any Windows computer uh, that you could access those tools with your language in C Sharp to, do, and to, make, to make your ideas about software development happen in a Windows environment. Okay, is that still the case? No, it is not. So, over the years, of course, Microsoft has had a huge amount of investment in the .NET framework. Um, I think the latest version of .NET is 4.8 that came out late last year in 2019. And uh, But now they're moving into .NET Core. .NET Core does not depend on Windows the way that .NET does. Okay. It's really intended to be more for cloud development or for mobile development or for development on Linux. So anytime you have a software developer, you know, and he wants his his target audience, the consumers of his application he's developing, to be broader than just Windows, .NET Core is what he goes to. Okay. Or she, excuse me. So what what technology are you most excited about right now? Blazor, without a doubt. Blazor is the coolest thing I have seen in a long time come out of the C Sharp world. And specifically with Microsoft, they're much to be uh, appraised for what they what the what Microsoft is doing with C Sharp and Blazor. Yep. And Blazor is, if I'm correct, the competitor to JavaScript frameworks like React and Angular. I would agree with that, but you can't you can use JavaScript and Angular alongside of Blazor, I believe. I believe okay. that's accurate. That's so cool. but Blazor is Microsoft's answer to say, you know, these um, these backend developers like myself, or you have have all this experience in ETL, but have great ideas about, you know, how can we develop a web front end? You know, mm -hmm. um, C Sharp is Microsoft's framework uh, built on WebAssembly to use the C Sharp language in the front end and in your browser. That's interesting to go from a language that was primarily for Windows only yeah. to in everybody's web browser on any platform. Isn't that great? I know. That's Microsoft doing some crazy things right now. They're really doing some crazy things. They've, they've done a lot of investment and um, uh, just making sure that their products and what they can do are available to developers at large, regardless of what platform is their favorite. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, so last question. Let's say college isn't in the cards for someone. Sure. Let's say they're they're thirty something years old. Can they still be a software developer? Absolutely, absolutely. How? So let, me, let me say that. So, um, when I was starting my journey into software development, uh, I was a much younger man than I am now. Um, although I, I hate to call myself old, but you know, um, college was definitely something that was in the cards for me, and I, I wanted to go that route. That being said, it is definitely not the only way to get it done. Um, if you are 
excited about software development and you want to take the initiative to to learn what it is to be a software developer you know commit to a language first okay um, like c sharp for example yep go out there and there's so many different tools on uh on msdn or just google you know um, code project you know stack hub you know all kinds of places where you can learn for free yep. um how to be a software developer using your language of choice and once you've gotten down the path where you, you feel confident and you've done a few little projects, find what kind of certifications out there where will professionally declare to the world that you know what the heck you're doing, you know, with this language. Now, at that point, my camera did cut off, but that was about the end of it. We were going to wrap up with one or two more sentences, and then I got up and hit done recording. So if you want to get it layered, check the description. His contact info, his Twitter account is below. Feel free to hit him up. Ask him some questions about what it really means to be a software developer, a .NET developer, how you can get started. And if you want to see me interview other professionals in the IT industry, just comment below and let me know which ones you're interested in seeing. I've got some more lined up. We're going to eat some boiled crawfish and it's going to be fun. So that's an interview with a real world software developer. Thanks for stopping by y'all. See you in the next one.